right, everybody. Are you ready for block four? This one down here. These are my colors. This is what a lot of you are doing as far as colors. Okay. And I think I posted everything that I'm supposed to do for you, I think. <laughs> it's a little crazy. I have mine laid out and of course I have not worked on it because I've just been going a little crazy. But here's mm, wait a minute no nope, wrong one it's this one is my block three nope wrong one <laughs> sorry here's my block three everybody all right so this is my block three and we'll just go through them really quick this one is doo -doo 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 my block one, which is the center block, and here is my second block. So today we're going to work on the fourth block. And one of these days I might actually get to piece some of this before the video. I'm not going to make any promises, but we'll see. All right, so I just laid it out. I haven't really looked at it too much. Um, just trying to figure out how I want to put it together. And I think we're going to start with our little half square triangles in the center. Maybe, maybe not. Nope, maybe not. Um, let's see. Sometimes this is the hardest part, especially when you have a lot of these angles that are um, not exactly easy. Okay. Normally I would start from the center out, but here's my way of thinking, just so that you know. See this little cross here? It intersects a lot of these blocks on each of the in each of these sections and they're uneven which means you have to kind of be a detective to figure out how to put it together in my case without doing Y seams if possible because I really don't like Y seams so all right first let's just start I'm gonna start with our large, the larger outside half square triangles, which are these right here, these big, in my case, they'd be the white and the purple. Are you guys enjoying this um, pattern and videos that we're doing? Yes, no, maybe. I was at the shop until well after seven last night, trying to put even more products and fabrics on the website. I think this is the most products or fabrics at least that I've had on the website since I started. Now, again, we're gonna go over it just in case you didn't watch any of the other videos. I'm doing, using a scant quarter of an inch on my seams. And I try to, wherever possible, iron my seams to the dark side. Sometimes that's not always possible. But, what I'm gonna start with now is I'm gonna iron the seams towards the purple, which is my darker color. I dislike having, showing a ghost seam behind white, if at all possible. Sometimes it's not possible, but I try very hard. And 
whichever side that you want the seam to go on if you start by setting your seam and for those of you who don't know setting your seam is you iron it just as it is when you're when you sew it so it's flat like this I'm gonna iron it just a quick iron over the top what that does is that's gonna expand the cotton in the the cotton fabric and the cotton thread and when I do fold this over it will give it a much crisper seam by laying it with the dark one on top when I go to fold it over my seam will automatically be towards the dark side I feel like a school teacher with these glasses it's because I only need the glasses for reading and close-up and if I keep taking them off and putting them on and taking them off and putting them on I end up losing them somewhere I probably have a half a dozen pairs of glasses around all the time so what are you guys working on I'd love to see what you guys are working on I posted a bunch of stuff from Kathy and Diane today so you could see what they're working on okay now what I'm gonna do is now, all right so we just did I just did two half square triangles on this side and two on this side now I'm gonna sew this corner block to this half square set of triangles and this half square or this triangle to this half square triangle set so I can make one little square and again I still have my dog ears on I know it's not the norm but for me I like keeping the dog ears on most of the time they actually help me I find just make sure I know what I'm doing yes okay. by keeping the dog ears on most of the time it will help me line up my seams without pinning too much so as long as the two dog ears are the same size and I shoot for this V in here then my stitching will be right where it needs to be and all of them should line up pretty well hope everybody had a good Easter I know it was a different type of Easter I actually did some FaceTime with my grandchild which was nice it's definitely a different way of doing things I mean I've done FaceTime with my grandchildren pretty regularly but um, it's just not you know knowing that you can't see any of them just puts a whole new spin on things because this time last year I was I had my granddaughter here was it last year or the year before it was the year before I had my granddaughter here for Easter which was very cool I'm still having issues with trying to figure out what day it is it's not easy okay now this is what we just sewed what I just sewed together what I have a tendency of doing because we have two half square triangles in the same colors I will use those as my go-to for either where to iron the seam or where not to iron the seam and to make sure there's not too much bulk like I said this is probably one of those cases where I will iron towards the white for my seam just so um, in the back we don't have a lot of bulk 
and I'll show you where I mean. Okay, if I iron it towards the white, oops, let's do it this way. If I iron towards the white, this way, then I'm not gonna have a lot of extra bulk right here in this corner. So that's what I'm gonna do. And in this case, in this one, I'm gonna iron towards the blue. And as usual, starch is really going to help you with uh, these blocks, especially blocks that have, or quilts that have a lot of small pieces and you're doing a lot of piecing because they will stop a lot of the stretching. All right, you guys, if you guys are, if anybody has any questions whatsoever, let me know. All right, now we're just gonna have to put these two together and then we will have one of our corners done. Okay. Now, what I think I want to do is I am going to take one of these and one of these down here, this purple corner a uh, triangle there and that one there and add them to this section sometimes it's you just got to be detective try to figure this out all right so and again I'm not pinning I don't do a lot of pinning but if we turn it around we can kind of see, can you see that purple? See how the purple is pretty even for a dog ear on each side? And when I turn it back to face me, the other, for the right side, this line mirrors this line. And it's pretty evenly spaced, so hence, I'm not gonna pin. And what I am gonna do is start right in in this whoops start right here make sure I, my stitches start there and they end in this V on this side what that does is it just makes sure everything is lined up and when you flip it over all of your fabric is going to line up straight and I'll show you when I finish this one flip it
All right. See how nice and lined up this side is? Let me do the other side too. So does anybody have anything they want to learn? Anything you need me, you want some help with? Anything you want me to show you? Because pretty soon I am going to have my class portal ready. Now, another point for keeping the dog ears. I'm trying to line this piece up over here. And I already have this dog ears right there. So by lining this up and making sure the dog ears shadow the same, the dog ears that are already there, everything, believe it or not, you don't have to pin. Honest. It takes some people a little bit of practice to learn this. And I know it's not the norm, but like I've told you before, anything that saves me some time is a lovely thing. Ah, look at that. Okay. So this is the one that I just sewed. I don't know if you can see it. Ah, see how nice and straight it lines up here? And the door gears are nice and even. go so this is one of our corners and now we have a, even though we have we've done all these triangles we have a nice straight line to connect to the rest of the block now to add to that straight line I'm going to take my white ones yep and add those to it so what I'm doing now is I'm gonna take this white corner here that's the white, I mean white triangle that's right there, and I'm gonna connect it to this whole piece that we've already done on both sides. And all I'm gonna do is extend our straight line. Once you do this this part, as far as the corner that we're working on, it's the same four times so you shouldn't have a problem once you watch this and watch me do it just let me make the mistakes which can happen especially when you haven't actually sewed a block together normally blocks aren't that bad I can look at the picture and kind of figure it out but these star blocks have got one a lot of pieces and two it's not um, even rows, so it's not, okay, putting three blocks, three squares together, then three more squares, then three more squares, and putting those little rows together to make one big block. This one's got a lot more angles to it, which really makes you think a little bit. You have to think to figure out how to do it. I will be going to the shop later on after this um, if you need anything we're still running a sale too so 10% off of everything anything any orders over 35 you get free shipping or we can do you can do curbside pickup too all right so far we've got 
that much of the corner done. Not too much more, and then we'll be able to have at least a quarter of it done. Okay, now we are going to um, and let's see if I do All right, I know what I'm gonna do. Let's see. All right. I'm gonna put these pieces together, kind of like that, on either side of our strip right here. All right, so I'm gonna put just these couple of pieces three pieces together right here on either side of the, the rectangle. It's the weather like where you are. Right now it's raining. It's kind of raining off and on all morning. I've been up since about 4.30. And every time I think it's going to stop raining, it starts to spritz again. Is a good one okay I've put the little square with the one of the smaller triangles and I have to sew this piece on like this now if you were piecing this most people would want to even up this corner with the very tip of the triangle but it won't line up for you it won't you can sew it that way but your straight line is not going to be straight this is what you have to do instead so you want an even amount on this side and you want the door gears or an even amount on this side for the door gears if we do if you do it that way when we open this up like this you'll have a straight line just so you can see what I'm doing what I did all right so we I we sewed it this way going down there and once you iron it up see how nice and even that line is it's not always easy to do Thank you. 
and that's without the dog ears you could still do it but I think with the dog ears it reminds me it makes it much easier for me to line everything up I was amazed at how warm and humid it was for Easter. I'm in Florida. I don't know where everybody else is, but here it was very humid on, on uh, Sunday. Almost oppressively so. So let's see, we are, what, do we have, what do we have coming up? Oh, we have Hoop Sisters Mystery Quilt coming up. I'll be posting more details on that soon. But basically, how that works is, um, if you have an embroidery machine, it's the most reasonably priced option to try a Hoop Sisters quilt if you've never done it. Um, Normally, and I'm pretty sure that's what the price is this year too, is they're about $69, um, which is very reasonable for a quilt. And, whoops, what am I doing? Um, you can go right on the Hoop Sisters website to purchase it. And, um, what am I doing? Make sure that you put on there that um, I am your store, your local shop. And when you do that and show me whether you email, take a picture, I don't care. Email me or show me that you did that and you paid for it. Your name will be put into a bucket where I will be sometime in July once the Hoop Sisters is all done, we'll be drawing a name and whoever that person is gets to pick their own Hoop Sisters CD for free. And normally, before all of this craziness started, I would have a free class on Wednesdays in the shop to help anybody who needed it with the Hoop Sisters mystery quilt. So what we're gonna have to do is we'll have to do it online. We'll do a live and I'll sew right along or embroider right along with you as long as my machine is cooperating because it hasn't liked being home. Normally it's at the shop. Okay. Alright, you're gonna have to excuse me one second because one of the dogs is not cooperating. I'll be right back. I know you can't hear it, but be right back. about that. It's always somebody or something. Ugh. 
Okay, so we're almost to the point where we've completed a quarter of this block. So, we've already sewed this together. I just sewed these two half square turnings. I'm going to put those together on both sides. And this is one of the few times that I will actually pin. And the reason for that is I want to make sure I get this seam lined up. And we're going to nest the seams. Oh, I can hear it raining again. almost done or at least not done but done to a point where you'll know where you how to put it together now I know some of this is repeat but some of you may not have heard it I'm sewing from here down. See how I've got my pin on an angle? This is where I'm trying to match up my seams. The reason I have it on an angle is so that I can sew all the way down, hit my seam with the needle down before I take my pin out. You'd be surprised on how easily just the motion of taking the pin out will mess up your seam align uh, alignment. So I'm super excited about Hoop Sisters. It's gonna be, I love the mystery quilt. We have so much fun with the mystery quilt. And just as an FYI, I have seen it, so I know what it looks like. So I can help you pick out fabric. They always do such a nice job. I love the designs. So, now, I'm going to sew this one on, and all I'm trying to do is give myself larger straight pieces to put together so that I don't have to do any Y seams. You're actually putting this specific block together kind of in, in big, tri big triangles. So far, we're almost putting that whole triangle part together right there. Almost done with it. And to put this together, I'm going to sew from here to here. I'm going to line up, and I'll show you. I'm going to line up this top and this side with the triangle that I'm going to sew on so that everything is even.
All right, so all I gotta do now, so we just sewed this one on, and I'm gonna iron it out. And I've got another little triangle. There's a lot of triangles inside of triangles with those blocks, but I like them. another triangle done almost done with this block all right now So now I'm going to take one side of, let's see if I can show this to you with the board. It'll make it a little bit easier without all of these pieces falling off. We'll see. All right. So we've already done this part. We've done this part and this part. Now what I want to do is I'm going to just one side of the spoke. I'm going to sew the small block onto the rectangle yeah i'm going to sew this small block onto this rectangle and then i'm going to sew, sew this small triangle on here what that's going to do is it's just going to give me another straight angle piece here that i can add to here so i would do that on this side and sew it to this this side to this side and this side to this side and what that's going to do is basically you're going to have your entire corner and you can actually sew this one on after well i don't know about sewing this one on i think you're gonna have to wait until you get this part done um let's see we'll see i'll try this one first and let's see how that'll work you could <laughs> All right, let's just do this. I think here, I think we're gonna have to sew this on first. So what I'm thinking is we might have to do this kind of, a, you know, almost half. We'll see. Just so that we can get this one little center piece in, if that makes sense to you. So what I'm thinking is we're gonna have to do, keep this here, but sew these together before we can get this part in. We'll see. Almost done. Sometimes, let me tell you. Next time I decide to come up with a crazy blocks like this, somebody yell at me. I give you permission to yell at me. How's that? Alright, let's see how this is going to work. I'm going to be really, really upset if I got to take this block apart to get that little centerpiece in, but I don't think so. square on the rectangle and now to put the triangle end cap on just like we've done before I don't pin and I'm not gonna mark all I'm doing is making sure the little triangle dog ears are even on both sides and I'm not taking a ruler out and measuring it and none of that just I try to stay away from too much exact measurements because it's no fun for me. It takes all the joy out of I just want to sit and sew. I don't want to sit here and have to measure every little itty bitty thing. 
yes you do have to do some measuring but if you're real good about cutting and you cut really well as far as making sure you're pretty accurate the rest of it should be easy okay now I'm going to sew these two pieces together I'm going to even up the bottom so I'm going to even up this part and the rest of it should work itself in I like it much better when I know what I'm doing <laughs> like we did with the uh, stitch happens because I actually have two of those wall hangs because I did one completely before I even did the first video Speaking of which, I'm going to probably set up some more quilting time on that next week so I can show you what I did or what I'm doing, which is pretty much winging it. I don't have any plan as far as what, how I'm going to quilt that. It's just kind of whatever the wall hanging tells me it wants to. And yes, I'm not crazy, but. You know, there's certain designs and blocks that call for certain type of quilting whether it's echoing or stippling or clamshells and it will decide how it should be and I've been looking at it that wall hang and the stitch happens wall hanging for over a week now I have it hung up so that I can see it or laid over a table just so that I keep looking at it trying to decide how I want to quilt it and I think I got a few more ideas just by looking at it Anybody have any questions on these blocks or what you've done so far? Um, ba -dum -bum. Okay. Now, now I think I can um, let's see. Yeah, that's how we're going to do it. Okay, I think. All right, let's see if I can show you. Mm-hmm. 
we do that. All right. Okay, so we've got this part and this part done, okay? What I would do next is, see basically that goes right there, is I, and this is, goes right here. Now, we can't sew this one onto here yet, because then we've got this kind of V, which isn't going to help us. What I recommend is if we keep just like this. So if we start sewing these down again, just like we did over here, except we're going to add this purple one instead. So you got this sewed together and then you're going to sew these two together and then you're going to sew this together. You can put it together this way. Once you do that, then this will uh, will will sew into this very simply with this these corners being your final step. So basically what we're going to do is create the inside square first and then put two opposite corners, this side and this side on at the end. Hopefully that makes sense to you. But if you follow what I've done already, then you're just gonna start on this side and add this to this. That will leave this down here to put, that's how we're gonna get this center cube in. If we do this part and this part and this part and sew these all together and then sew it into here, then you'll have this final part here to put together. I hope that makes sense. I think it will once you start sewing it. So at least if you've watched the video, you know where to start. The rest of it is gonna be easy because I've already showed you how to do one of the full corners. And if you want, I will sew a little bit more here just so that you get the idea before I go do some work. Okay. I haven't had to think about a block in a long time this month. These blocks are even keeping me on my toes. So I've just sewed this piece together. Now I'm gonna sew this one to this one and this one to this one. All on angles. Now, here it goes. I know I keep saying the same thing over and over again, but it's worth repeating. And I'm not saying this is perfect way to do it or it is the quilter's way to do it it's my way it's just how I do it this is what I've learned over the years I want to sew this piece to this piece now you would think that you're gonna line it's very hard to do this like this but you would line it up like that but that's not really how you're gonna do it because You need your seam allowance. So, can you see that? That's how much 
my seam allowance is. It's basically a scant quarter of an inch. And I have, I know you can't tell, but on this side, I have the same amount. And the dog ears should be the same. I hope that makes sense to you. Makes sense to me, but. And that's how I do it without pinning. Well, let's see. Wouldn't it be bad if one of these days I did that and it didn't work, especially on video? <laughs> no, it works fine. That wouldn't be good though if that happened, especially on live video. Ooh. But I've been doing it long enough to know that it works. If it didn't work, it's because I was off a stitch and my seam allowance wasn't correct. All right, now we've got one more piece to do this way. And again, you want, this isn't gonna line up here, you want it so that you have an equal seam allowance on both sides. when my machine decides to eat fabric. It's not good. Anybody got any questions? Oop, I messed up. See, it's what happens. I'm not perfect either. Far from it. I didn't pay attention to what I was saying and doing at the same time. Sometimes it's very, very hard to sit there and sew and talk at the same time.
there we go nice straight edge all right now I think you get the idea now of what we're doing <laughs> now when I so this piece to this piece and you're gonna have a nice triangle it's just a lot of triangles inside triangles in this thing This seem to line up so we're gonna try marking it like I showed you last week I think it was by marking it um, whatever your seam allowance is meaning I'm doing a scant quarter of an inch so by marking this seam right here good morning Rose um, on the because these are two different angles so by marking this seam right here where this purple piece is sewed to where the purple triangles is sewed to the teal one or the blue one and marking that a scant quarter of an inch or quarter of an inch if that's whatever your seam allowance is and marking this side the same amount by using the pin to pin these two together in those exact spots hopefully this angle will match up I hope like I said, I'm doing this at the same time you are. So, I guess we're gonna find out. using glass pen when I do this part because they're just usually or a thin pen all right so can you see the two marks there's one there and one up there so I'm going to go through the first mark right on the seam and then I'm going to hit the second mark and I'm making sure my pin is upright, standing up nice and straight, not uh, on an angle like this, not going back, nice and straight. And then I use another pin on the side of that to pin my seams before you pull that pin out. All right, let's cross our fingers and see if that was what we're supposed to do. If that will work. I think it is though. I think it will work. I hope it works. Because I don't feel like pulling anything apart today. But this is what happens when I don't put it together first. Not only do we use those marks for pinning, but I also use those marks for sewing. So you want to 
try and hit right over the center of that mark that you made. And no, that's not gonna work. Maybe it will. It might. Now, we've got a small seam. <laughs> All right, let's see if that'll work. Nope, it's not going to work. All right, I got to unwrap it. Oh, see, sometimes it works that way. It happens. I'm really good with a seam ripper. I wish I wasn't, but I am. So how are you doing, Rose? Did you have a good Easter? Let's try that again. All right, this time, I'm not gonna worry about that seam. What I'm gonna do is line up my bottom. We'll see if that gives me enough of what I want. This is a good reason to use water-soluble thread too. And before you go laughing, no, I use a lot of water-soluble thread. We use it a lot with Hoop Sisters. And whenever I'm putting a block together that I'm not quite sure about for the first time, I will use it too. I don't know if that's what I want. Let's see. All right, we're not going to do that. I changed my mind. Instead of doing that, what I think we need to do is keep going over. So, we've just created this piece. And I think we've got to go this way. Rather than connect, try to connect it to this triangle. So, what I would do there is... I would put these two together and let me think, or these two. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I put these two together. And these, put this one on here, and then you can connect it to this piece. Put this one together, this one together, this half square tri triangle together, then you'll have this whole corner done. And then, 
I believe you should be able to connect this part to this part much easier. Eventually you're just going to have this corner and the opposite corner to add to the whole square. And I think that's all you need to do. If you have any problems with this block, let me know. Um, now that I've wa walked, worked through it, you shouldn't have any problems. But if you do, you can let me know and I'll help you out. I'll put another video if I have to. I'm working on um, some more Saturday sampler blocks for by the end of this month, you'll have some more. We've got the Hope Sisters starting up very, fairly soon and I will have all of the information, I think this week for you, probably. This week or next week at the latest, which is gonna be a lot of fun. Um, almost ready to pull the trigger on a new classroom portal. So I think that should be fun, but that means I've got to kind of um, get my videos more clean. So that's a little bit more work all on its own, trying to clean up all these videos, but we're getting there. If you don't need anything else, I am going to be at the shop shortly. I'm packaging orders. We're still running a sale, so everything is 10% off. If you place an order over $35, the shipping is free. If you want to pick it up curbside, I am working on an option to do that online. Um, for now, if you place your order online or call me and I will help you with the order, then you can come and pick it up anytime you want, or at least when I'm there. Other than that, that's it. I've got a lot more stuff going on the website every single day. I was there until like seven o'clock after seven o'clock last night and put dozens of fabrics on the website along with making sure all the inventory mounts are correct. So when you go to order, you don't have any problems. Other than that, I think that's it for now. Uh, we'll see about doing, I think, what I'm going to do instead of doing these videos twice a week, I'm going to do them, keep them once a week. So it'll be next Thursday. Uh, we will do this block and I will post the directions for it, the cutting directions and everything for you soon. Um, I think that's just working good for me. If you want, that gives me extra time during the week to make sure I'm at the shop or when we come up with another video like the Hoop Sisters or something else. Um, I have some extra time because doing multiple videos in a week is bad enough without having to do videos three or four times a week. All right, that's it, everybody. I um, hope you have a great day. You know where I am. If you need me, you can call the shop, message me, or email me. Bye, everybody. I hope you have a night. great day. Talk to you later.